Jesus. We're going to be talking tonight about little faith. Little faith. Remember last week? I think it was last week we talked about um, working on faith. We need faith for, for God to use us. We need faith, you know, for, for everything. The just shall live by faith. One of the scriptures that we, we talked about. Amen. But there were several places in the Word of God where God spoke to His people about their little faith. Amen. Yes. How many of you want little faith? No. No? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Amen. We want great faith, no? Yeah, right. We, we, we don't want little faith. No. Little faith is, uh, we'll, we'll learn about it tonight. It's, it's not a good thing. You know what I mean? I guess it's better than no faith. You know, and, and I think everybody out, everybody in their Christian walk starts off with little faith. Because he says faith is like a grain of mustard seed. He says, man, and I don't know if you've ever seen a mustard seed, but, but, but I've seen the little uh, necklaces and stuff the girls buy. And there's like a little, almost like a clear, like a, like a you know, like the shower doors are like, kind of like frosted. A little, like a, a teardrop, frosted teardrop. And right in the center was a seed of, a mustard seed, and it was tiny, man. You know them little seeds you get on the pizza sometimes? Yeah. I mean, it looked like that. I mean, it was just a little tiny, just, you know, and he said, if you have a faith a grain as a grain of mustard seed, little tiny piece of faith, he said, you could say unto the mountains, be removed and cast into the sea. Amen. He said, they'll obey you because Amen. of the faith. Amen. You with me? Amen. So he said the fa that the that the the mustard seed is the smallest seed, uh, uh, you know what I mean, that there is of the herbs and all that stuff. But he said it turns into one of the greatest plants and even could become like, like shade tree, you know what I mean. But but uh, you know uh, uh, we don't want to continue in little faith, amen. I called it puny faith, amen. But we're going to talk about it tonight in Matthew chapter six, verse twenty-five to thirty-four. And, and we've been talking about Matthew a little bit because we've been talking about the kingdom of God, seeking the kingdom of God first. But we're going to be reading a lot of scripture tonight. So uh, Matthew 6, 25 through 34 says this. Therefore, I say unto you, now notice what they're talking about. He says, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your, your body, what you will put on, which is your clothes, right? Yeah, yeah. Is not life more than the than food, yeah. and the body more than clothes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He says, "Look at the birds of the air, for they neither to the, ne neither sow, in other words, they don't plant, nor reap, they don't harvest, nor gather. That you don't bring it in." He says, "Into barns. Yet your heavenly Father, he said, feeds them." And you, are you not, now listen to this, are you not more valuable, or, or of more value than they? Amen? Yeah. You, you, you should underline that. Yeah. Are you not of more value than these birds? Yeah. Amen. Huh? Amen. He says, which, which of you, by worrying, he said, can add one cubit to his stature? In other words, uh, let's just say an inch to his height. Uh, by worrying. He says, so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. Now we're talking about the flowers. He said, how they grow. They, they neither toil nor spin. In other words, they don't make clothes and do cotton and all that different stuff to make clothes. He said, and yet, I say uh, to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And I was just watching the movie of Solomon, and I just watched it on YouTube. I put it up and watched it on YouTube and to see what he had and the, and the glory. And I mean, he, this guy, did, he didn't even play with silver. He had so much gold that silver was like throwaway. I mean, silver is valuable today. Yeah. You know, and the copper and stuff, it wasn't, you know, I mean, he had his uses, but it's like, you know, the best woods from the wherever in the world and all this. He said, and, and, the, and the finest robes and clothes and chariots and horses and everything you could think of Solomon had. He said, yet, yeah. he said, Solomon in all his glory wasn't arrayed like one of these lilies. Hmm? Um, 
Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is, which is which today is and tomorrow is gone, is thrown into the oven, will He not much more clothe you? And I put this in parentheses. O ye of little faith. Hmm? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all this, now listen to this, for after all these things, the Gentiles, or the sinners, seek for. I mean, you know, because we're sinners. We come from that world. Yeah. We know what they're looking for. Yeah. Sometimes they'll come in your house looking for it. Yeah, that's right. When you're not there. That's right. You with me? Right. So they're seeking all these things. God says, why are you acting like these sinners? Yeah. All desperate for more and more and more. He said, they do that. You're different. Right. He said, after these things the Gentiles seek, he says, for your heavenly Father, look at this, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. That's another place you ought to underline. <laughs> for your heavenly Father knows that you, have need, you need all these things. Yeah. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own, its own things. Sufficient for the day is, uh, is its own trouble. Amen. Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Amen. Amen. What was one of the causes of the little faith? Worry. Worry, yeah. worry is sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 I put this, I, I, uh, well, definition of worry. A definition of worry is this. To give way to, a, to anxiety or unease. How many, how many people, are not in this room or maybe on the YouTube, are suffering from anxiety. I never even heard of anxiety till a few years ago. Yeah. You, you, you understand? Yeah. Now everybody in your family has anxiety. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. We never even heard of anxiety before until maybe 10 years ago. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Well, we're living in the last days. Yeah, what does anxiety come? What, what is anxiety? It's a it's tremendous fear. Yeah. A fear of you know, I can't do it. I'm not earning enough. I'm not doing this. He said, in the last days, men's hearts will fail them. Their hearts will fail them because of fear. Yeah. You with me? Mm -hmm. Worry is, a, is, is, is to give way to anxiety. To give way to anxiety or unease. Allow one's mind to dwell on difficulty or troubles. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. To allow one's mind to dwell on difficulties or troubles. It's not that we're supposed to be uh, dumb and ignorant and not, not see that there's trouble there. It's that we don't dwell there. Yeah. Right. We dwell in God's Word. Yeah. We dwell, you with me? Yeah. We get in this book say, I know what it looks like and I know when I'm in, in a mess right now, I better get in here and find my help. My help comes from the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, are you with me? I don't know if I wrote it. Or, yeah, I did. I, I did right here. So let me just tell you this real quick. Some of the synonyms of it was fret. You ever read in the Psalms where it says fret not because of evildoers or do not fret because of people who, who out there who, who, who are doing wrong, bro. They're doing wrong and they're out there driving brand new 2016 uh, Escalades and stuff like that. You know, they're still the 204s and the... 99s and the in the 80s, yeah. and they're they're driving around brand new car. I mean, they're not one. They have 64 Impalas, cherry lifted, yeah. everything. They have Harleys. They have all this. You're like, Gee, yeah. wish I had all that stuff, huh? Yeah. And, and you're all tripped out because you know they, they got all this earnings and and or or the same as you, and yet they're living large and you're struggling. How do they do it? Yeah. You with me? He said, don't fret, because that was one of the sins to fret, to agonize, to overthink, amen, or to panic. Hmm? Where do panic attacks come from and stuff like that? Hmm? 
It don't come from the Lord, that's for sure. Right. You with me? Yeah. It comes from us thinking, overthinking, panicking, and all this stuff about what's going to happen and how we're going to do this and how we're going to do that. Man, when you got Jesus, you got peace. Watch. Yeah. Check it out in, in Philippians chapter 4. And let me give you this. Let me give you the Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says this Be anxious for nothing, or be anxious about nothing, or don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. He said, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, that means you don't even know how it came, where it came out, anything. It just surpassed your understanding. He said, and the, the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds and through Christ Jesus. Amen. Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Don't, be, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. You with me? You cannot, you ever heard me say this? You cannot worry and worship at the same time? Yeah. Try it. You can't do it. You with me? When you pray and give thanks to God in faith, peace of, the peace of God fills your heart. Amen. You can't worry and worship at the same time. When you pray and give thanks to God for the situation or in the situation, not just for the situation, because we don't thank God we're going through trouble. We thank God in the trouble that we're in, that He's gonna He's gonna make a way. Amen. When you when you pray and give thanks to God in faith, peace, the peace of God fills your heart. Amen. Amen. Another thing that causes little faith is doubt. The definition of doubt is a feeling of uncertainty, a lack of conviction, or I put in parentheses, not convinced. Let me say it again, the definition of doubt is a, a feeling of uncertainty or a lack of conviction, and I put in parentheses, not, con not convinced that, that God is who he said he's going to be, who he is. You with me? I, I put also a note, uh, No, uh, oh, it's also wavering in opinion or fear to be afraid of. Hmm? Doubt causes little faith. And let, let, let's look at the word Matthew chapter 8, verse 23 through 27. This is the story. Of, well, let me just read it to you. Then Jesus got into the boat and started across the lake with him, with his disciples. Suddenly a furious storm struck the lake with waves breaking into the boat. But Jesus, check it out, Jesus was sleeping. Ain't that a trip? Jesus was sleeping in the midst of this Gilligan's Island storm, man. Huh? It says the disciples went and woke woke him up shouting lord save us we're going to do to drown in one translation and I, I didn't have time to look it up but it said god don't you even care that we're going to drown yeah. and that's the way we feel sometimes yeah. that god don't even care about us yeah. right. i mean we're christian we're serving him and yet we're all this stuff's happening and god don't even care look at he's over there chill you know what as a matter of fact i've been praying and he don't even answer me with our little attitudes up yeah. I'm mad at, 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 at Dios. <laughs> huh? Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him up, shouting, Lord, save us. We're going to die or we're going to drown. Check out Jesus' response. It said, Jesus responded, Why are you afraid? You have so little faith. I put that in parentheses there. Why are you afraid, dude? How long have you been serving me, sis? He says, why are you afraid? You with me? He said, why are you afraid? You have so little faith. Amen. Remember, faith is belief in God. Faith is trust in God. Faith is absolute confidence in God. Faith is full assurance of God. 
that he is who he is. He's going to do what he said he's going to do. There is no doubt in you. You with me? Remember I was telling you the, 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 the story about the little mustard seed, that if you have faith as a mustard seed, say to that mountain, be removed, cast into the sea, and it'll, it'll obey you. And I think it's in Mark 11, 23, where it said that if you have faith as a mustard seed, he said, you say unto the mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and doubt not in your heart, but believe that which you said will come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you said. Right. Amen. Hmm? So it has a lot to do with your talk. Amen. It has a lot to do with your speech. Amen. How you been talking lately? Amen. You've been talking about God's plan and what He's going to do, and you're speaking faith, and uh, or you've been speaking doubt, and you've been speaking fear, and say, I'm, I just don't know. They're just getting worse, and things are happening, and my money, I don't know how I'm going to pay these, and nah, 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 nah. you with me? I'm telling you, remember I'm talking about a fight of faith. you got to fight yourself what you're saying out your mouth sometimes. You need to literally shut your mouth so that you don't say nothing dumb and curse yourself. You, you with me? And it's like, you know what I mean? But he said, you, you know what I mean? You, you have to believe, you have to doubt not in your heart. You with me? And you have to speak those things and believe what you say. He said, it's going to come to pass. You'll have whatsoever you say. Right. Amen. 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 Um, then he got, he said, why are you afraid you have so little faith? It says, then he got up and he rebuked the wind and the waves. And suddenly there was a great calm. He was in the boat too, man. Yeah. It says the disciples were all were, were amazed. It says, Who is this man? They asked. Even the winds and the waves obey him. They didn't even know who they're dealing with. I'm telling you tonight, sometimes some of us don't even know who we're dealing with tonight. Who is this man? Because you know what? He's going to do miracles in your life. He's going to blow your mind, and you're going to you're going to freak out on some of the stuff he does, and then you're going to, uh, now I believe, Lord, and you're going to worship him, and your level of faith is going to go deeper because of situations like this. You with me? See, I wish it was just as easy as just telling you, because I'm instructing you now, and I'm preaching you, and I'm teaching you now. You know what I mean? But this is not where, you know what I mean? It's like, like I'm instructing you, like you guys are going to fight in the MMA. And you know what I mean? It's going to be hard. You're going to get hit. It's going to be tough. I mean, five rounds? Come on now. Even three rounds. Five minutes apiece? Come on now. Out of shape, all this stuff. But you're going to get in there. They're going to hit you hard and all this. But you can do it. You know what I mean? And you're, yeah, mm -hmm. From the east side homes, you know what I mean? It's like, you know what I mean? That's all good and stuff, you know what I mean? And, but it's like you ain't in the ring. And 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 so you know what I tell you now, you 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 you're gonna re probably forget when you're in there getting beat up, you know. But it's like a whole different ball game. You know what I mean? When you're when you're in church, amen, amen. Then you go home and all yeah. oh, hell breaks yeah, loose. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and your finances, your married kids, and this and the phone calls got arrested and, and all this yeah. that's 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 where your faith comes yes. in. Yeah. Not over here at church. Right. This is just the you know, we're we're out here, we're not sweating or nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're just say, Amen. I'll tear the devil up. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, but faith that comes in that ring, man. Yeah, man. That's where you learn stuff is in that ring. Yeah, right. Some of these fighters that are fighting and they get a great loss, like some of these champs, they go back, evaluate themselves. They go look. They go say, where did I go wrong? Where did I slack off? And then they come back, hopefully even better than when they were before, because of the loss. Right, right. Some of the things that have happened in your life, the losses and the deaths and the and the and the bankruptcies and all this stuff, is you ought to thank God for tonight. Yeah. You ought to say, God, that helped me go deeper with you, God. Yes. Yes. Not take yes. these things away from me, right. but God, give me strength through this. Give me grace through these battles, through these shipwrecks and all this other stuff, to 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 continue living for you and not to quit. Right. Not to give up, but to yeah, praise yeah. you even more after the fact. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Peter had to overcome fear and doubt in his own, in his own life. 
in Matthew chapter 12, verse 22 to 33. Let's go there. Matthew 12, 22 to 33. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat. Oh, Jesus. I thought they just got out of the boat, all happy. Now he, he insisted that they get back in a boat and cross to the other side of the lake. He says, while he sent the people at home, amen, he, he had just came, he had fed people, healed people, done all this, sends them home, sends his disciples across the lake. It says this, it says, after, after sending them home, he went up on a hill by himself to pray. Night fell while he was, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from the, from the land. Amen. For a strong wind had risen, had, had risen and they were, were, were fighting uh, heavy waves about 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Now these guys have been fighting for hours, these waves, and have you ever been out on a rowboat? Yeah. Or maybe even a little boat that had a little motor and you're in the middle of the res or something? Yeah. With that little tiny four horsepower motor, you know I mean, four or five heavy duties inside, you know what I mean, big old fellas fishing and you're trying to yeah. get that thing back and the wind's blowing and them waves are coming up. Oh, it's, it's almost impossible. And if you're in a rowboat, they didn't have motors in those days. So all these guys are trying to roll that boat and stuff, and they were stuck in the middle for hours upon end while Jesus was up praying. Amen? <laughs> um, let me see here. About 3 o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them. Now listen, watch out. Walking on the water. Come on, somebody. Yeah. He didn't come by in a cruise ship. He didn't come by in a canoe. He come by. He was in prayer, seeking God's face, getting some answers. So full of God, he just thought, I'm going home and walk right on water. All the way out into the middle of the lake where these guys were, with waves and everything crashing. Ain't that a trip? People are probably saying, oh, that's not possible. Jesus is. For you it might not be. Amen. Walking on the water. When the disciples seen him or saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. They were what? Terrified. They were terrified. In their, in, in, uh, in their fear, they cried out, It's a ghost! <laughs> They go me fishermen, man. They thought it was a Yorona or something. It's a ghost, and they started crying. But Jesus spoke to them, spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I'm here. Amen. That's good right there. Then Peter called out to him, called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you. Walk, walking on the water. Could tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So he wants you to come. Yeah. Jesus, uh, uh, so Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus, period. I wish we could stop there. Because some of us have done great things for God and stepped yeah. out in faith and, and yeah. seen great things. And it's, yeah. But it doesn't end there. He says, but when he saw, now listen, when he saw the strong winds, he's seen Jesus first walk on water, but now he's seeing strong waves. After you're walking for a while, you're seeing problems and issues. Huh? Yeah. Maybe even problems at the church, and now you're, well, but I think, and all this. And, hmm? It says that he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord. There it is again. He shouted, Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. Look at it, I put this in parentheses again. This is what he said, you have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? He had little faith, he's walking on water. 
But to Jesus, you know what the little faith was? It wasn't that he was walking on water and, and he fell. It was that he looked at all the problems that he was going through. He got his eyes off Jesus. Yes. That's what happens. That's where fear comes in. That's where worry comes in. Yes. Yeah. That you're looking at everything else and you're not looking at the Savior. Yeah. You're not looking at the, 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 the owner of all things. You're not looking yeah. at the healer. You're not yeah. looking at the one who saved you in the first yeah. place. The one who healed your marriage. Yeah. The one who touched you, got you out of trouble. The one you're looking at all these problems and money and all this yeah. other stuff. And he sank. Amen. You with me? And he asked him, he said, why? He said, why? Uh, he said, you have so little faith. Uh, Jesus said, why do you doubt? Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the son of God. They, ex they exclaimed. Huh? That's heavy duty. You with me? See, sometimes your fall may encourage the other the people at church. Yeah. They say, wow, God did that for him. Yeah. Praise God. And their, their relationship will go deeper with God. So yeah. you don't yeah. understand that. Yeah. You're with me? But sometimes when you, your problems and your issues are going to actually help the church get stronger. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to help your family get stronger. Yeah. They're going to give your, uh, your unbelieving relatives a reason to believe. Because yeah. yeah. they're going to see a miracle in you. Yeah. You with me? It's heavy duty. Right, man. So how can we increase our faith? So how can we increase our faith? I'm glad you asked. Number one, know Him. How do we increase our faith? By knowing Him. One word, believe. Amen? Believe is the same word used for faith. Total reliance, total trust, dependency. You're absolutely convinced, fully assured. You with me? And accepting Jesus Christ as that Savior as my Lord and Savior. Amen. You with me? One word. How do we get closer or how do we grow in faith? We know to know Him, to believe. Let me give you this scripture here. John chapter 6, 26 through 29. It says this. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you. Now, he had just fed a bunch of people. They followed him all the way across the Sea of Galilee, all the way on the other side. They followed him, came follow, you know what I mean, came looking for him. And this is what he said, this is why you followed me, because I blessed you guys. I fed you, I clothed you, I healed you, I got you out of trouble, I opened blind eyes, I did this and that. He says, that's why you're coming over here, because you want me to do it again. Hmm? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you. Not because you understand the, the miraculous signs. You understand the reason why I did what I did. Amen? He says, but don't be so concerned about uh, perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that that the Son of Man can give, can give you. He says, for God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. He says, they, they replied, we want, to per, we want to perform God's works too. That ought to be your response. Amen. We want to perform God's works too, Pastor. Amen. Now, we don't want to just come and hear about God's works and go home a little bit stirred up because we heard God healed somebody. Right. We want to be there when he heals somebody. Yeah. We want to be the vessel he uses to lay yeah. hands on yeah. somebody and their eyes are open. Yeah. Their feet are healed. Their, their back is healed. Their body. You, you with me? We want to be the one to lead them to Christ. Yeah. These people were, at least they were hungry for, for God to use them. Yeah. You with me? He said, they said, we want to perform God's works too. What should we do? Jesus t told them, he said, this is the only work God wants from you. You ready? Amen. Believe. He said, believe in, the own, believe in the one he has sent, which is who? Believe, believe in Jesus. That's all the works God wants you to do. Because if you believe in him, these signs shall follow you. <coughs> 
Amen. In my name, you Amen. cast out devils. Amen. In my name, you'll speak in tongues. Amen. In my name, he said, you'll, you'll take up serpents and they will not harm you. He said, you'll drink any deadly thing. It shall not harm you. He said, you'll, you'll lay hands on sick people and they'll recover. Amen. You with me? That's the, that's the sign of that God's with us. Amen. You with me? Not something we're aspiring for. One day we'll be there. It's like, no, that's that's just what comes with the package. You get this brand new Toyota car. You get the CD player, the backup camera, air conditioning. Come on, somebody. You get all this stuff for, you know what I mean, for that price. Huh? And when you got saved and when you believe in Jesus, you cast out devils. You get to speak in tongues. You get to lay hands on sick people and they'll recover. No questions, no if, ands, or but, no how or why. Come on now. Well, how? How does it work? What do I got to do? Huh? Amen. These, this is what's going to follow you, he said. These signs, amen. We want to work the good works of God. What do we need to do? He said, there's only one thing you need to do, and that's believe. Amen. Believe in Jesus, and you'll work the works. Yeah. Number two. First one was what? Know him. Know him. To know him, to believe. Number, number two is to ask him. Pray. That's what prayer is, asking God. Yeah. Asking God for help. Asking God for power. Asking God to use you. Asking God. You with me? Amen. He said, be, not ang be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. You with Amen. me? That's all worship. Amen. He said, you with me? Amen. He said, and you do all this, the peace of God is going to fill your heart. Amen. They're not going to be there. They're going to look at, you know, have you seen them? I seen something the other day and said, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Amen. I said, we should buy those for the church. Amen. <laughs> Second was to ask to pr ask him to pray. And this scripture I'm going to read you comes out of, I think it's coming out of Jude chapter 1, verse 7, verse 17 through 21. I, and I, I wanted to read it to you. And these, some of these I'm reading to you in context. I could, I could have just read, you know, pray in your most holy faith, building yourself up in your, your most holy faith in the spirit. I could have just read you that. But I want you to see... Everything kind of like that. We've been, I've been even talking to you about. Everything ties into that. And I don't want to just give you just a portion to say pray this, you know, here. This, you know, this way, say, pray in the Holy Ghost. Or I, I want you to see everything that he's telling us right here in, this, in, the, in, the, in the context of Scripture. He said this. And, and, uh, he said, but you, my dear friends, he said, must remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, predicted. They, to, they told you that in the last times there would be scoffers. There were mockers. There were people who were talking about you, talking yeah. about me, talking about the church, yeah. talking about uh, Jesus' return. He said, I told you that this is going to happen. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That, that uh, uh, there will come scoffers. Uh, he said, whose purpose in life, this is their purpose, is to satisfy their ungodly desires. Hmm? You can think of them. You can just say, what ungodly desires do you struggle with? And you can say, well, these, this, this is talking about these people here that live and their purpose is to, be, to pretend to be a Christian, but they're living for their ungodly desires. He said, these people are the ones who are creating divisions among you. Among who? who? The church. You with me? You got to watch it because they, they, could, they, could, they could come here too. You know what? Who's whispering in here talking about your pastor? Yeah. Right. Well, I don't think, and I don't. Well, what do they do? Well, what do they drive? Well, how much money they got? And then, then shut up. For a sock, you know. Uh, amen? Yeah. Watch who's talking to you. You know, even out there in your jobs and all that stuff. Make sure, hey, what church you go to, bro? Ask them that. Number one question. Oh, I know God. I love God. All this. Like, hey, what church you go to, bro? And then they tell you, wow, well, I, I don't go to, I kind of go to just wherever the Lord leads me. Nah, 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 nah. Red light, red light, warning, warning. Don't listen to him. Run away. <laughs> you with me? Yeah. 
Because if they're unfaithful to church, they will be unfaithful to their wife. They'll be unfaithful. They'll be looking at your wife. They'll be on. Come on now. They'll be t trying to get your your wallet. They'll be because they're not dependable. You can't. I mean, they're not faithful to God. And one church, they can't be faithful to one wife. One guy came in here one time and he was trying to interrupt my wife when she was doing a clothing giveaway. She was preaching and stuff, and he was trying to out scripture and do all this stuff and get people. And my, my wife told me, and I, I said, Who is this guy? And I'm watching. And I went up to her and said, Hey, bro, who are you, man? He said, I'm so and so. I said, You saved her? Well, yeah, yeah, man. Praise God. I said, What church you go to? Oh, I don't go to church. I, I go to all, you know, wherever the spirit. I said, I don't even have time for you. And I looked at him because he was hugging his lady as he's coming in, and I said, I feel sorry for her because he's going to be cheating on her because he can't be faithful to church. One church. He can't be faithful to that woman. That's for darn sure. This is what he's talking about here. Amen? He said, these people are the ones who are creating divisions among you. He said, they follow their, their natural in, uh, in, instincts because they do not have God's Spirit in them. Yeah. Huh. That's why he said test the Spirit, right? Yeah. He says, but you, dear friends, and this is what I put in parentheses. Uh, I just parenthesize what's, what's in the Word. It says, uh, must build each other up. King James says, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. But I like this. It says, must build each other up. Hey, I thought I was here just to... Just to receive, man. I thought I'd come to church just to get. Hmm? But he said, no, your job is to build the church up. Your job is to strengthen each other. Your job is to build each other up in, the, in your most holy faith. You with me? You're not here just to be a spectator. You with me? That's what he said. He said, must build each other up in your most holy faith, praying in the power of the Holy Spirit, right. and await the mercy of, God, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will bring you eternal life. And it says, it, uh, in, in this way, you will keep yourselves safe in God's love. Amen. Oh God, keep me safe. But, you know what I mean? We just live for ourselves. It's not going to happen. God keeps you safe when you when you love His church, when you love the brethren, when you love one another. When He told Peter, Satan desires to sift you, bro. He wants to have you, said so He can sift you like wheat. And His whole concern was God, that you, when you're restored, He says, come back and, and, and minister to the body of Christ. He said, encourage the, the church, bless the church, be with the church. You with me? Number three, listen to Him. Listen to him. Read and study his word. Romans 10, 17 says this, So faith comes from hearing. That is, hearing the good news about Christ. And also 2 Timothy 2, 15. I don't know if you remember this, Bible school students, from your main page. Study to show yourselves, show thyselves approved unto God. A workman that, it, that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You with me? Yeah. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, but you got to listen. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Amen. And you know, I, I tell people this, I don't know who picks it up or who listens or not, but, but it's like uh, 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 the, the, the greatest faith that I got. You know why I stay so fired up and pumped up? It's because I'm always preaching the word. Yeah. And I'm hearing what I'm preaching. Yes. Yeah. I'm not here on idol. Yeah. You with me? Just you know, I, I thought about it a few times. Would you put one of my videos on and yeah. go home and let you listen to that? No. <laughs> See if that'll help. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Amen. But then I'd be at home probably all discouraged, drinking and everything yeah. else, all jacked yeah. up, saying, "Man, I should have stayed in church." Yeah. But the greatest faith comes when you're when you're the preacher. 
Wait, come on, ladies. Yeah. Come on, man. When you're the one sharing your faith and you're the one telling them and yeah. you're speaking and you walk away so fired up yeah. because you just preach and faith comes by hearing, well, I just heard what I said. Yeah. That's the greatest kind of faith. Yeah. You can hear what I say all day long and say, oh, that was good what Pastor said, but it ain't as good as when it's coming out of your mouth. Yeah. You'll be, you know what I mean? That's yeah. what I, somebody said that one time. He said, why do you think God made, made, made us pastors? And, and, and everybody's listening. He says, so that we won't backslide. Well, you know what I mean? We'll, we'll, we'll stay in that pulpit. We'll stay in there. The yeah. things you see your pastor do, you got to do. You're not going to make it. Yeah. You got to get in there. You got to share your faith. Yeah. I told my, you know where my church started? It didn't start when God gave me a vision in Mitchell Park to start a church almost 20 years ago. My church started when I would come home and on a certain night we would have church at my house. We had five kids, so we had a congregation already. <laughs> and we would put one to usher, one to pick up the offering, one to sing a special, one, you know what I mean? And, you know, one to, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? Different things, the, read a scripture or whatever it was. And I would open just like we're having church. And I'd put them, we had this fireplace with the little step up there where you put, you know, put the, the fire in there. And, and they would stand up there and they would do all this. And we would, just like we're having church. And we just kind of started doing that. We never thought. God would use us to have a church. Right, I think God seen that and said, Oh, I found a pastor. I found Amen. a congregation here. Amen. You with me? Amen. And, he, and, and he started something in our hearts. And I didn't, you know, Tim's story, I don't know if you ever heard of Tim's story, great evangelist, powerful, miracles and all this <laughs> stuff. He said, man, when I started, he said, I wanted God so bad. He said, I went in Bible college. I didn't have no anointing oil like they had. He said, God just said oil. I thought of Crisco. You know, that's all they had at the Bible college. So the black man went and got Crisco, put it all over his face. He didn't even realize it's all white all over his face he said I was in my room I thought I locked the door he said but I put my, my stuffed animals out and I, he said I had just listened to the hour of power by R.W. Shambach took notes and all this he said man that, that my hour of power was on now he said man I pulled my notes out I told him oh you're here today God brought you here he said I was preaching to those stuffed animals and man I was tearing it up for an hour he said I was going to town man. he said There'd be times I'd even tell a man, who wants to get saved today? If you're here, I've seen that, Paul. I've seen it raised up high. Oh, amen, brother. And he said one day he left the door unlocked and his roommate came in. There he is, full of white crystal oil, man, all over his face. And he's caught him preaching to the stuffed animal. He said, but you know what? I didn't care. He said, because you have to start somewhere. You with me? Amen. And it's like you gotta start with who you are, your kids. That's why I like the kids' ministry. They don't know they're about. Uh, what scripture did you use? Because you misquoted and you said this, and I didn't agree with it. You know, they just ah, they're just sitting there, really. Yeah. I can yeah. speak in tongues. I'll lay hands on my Oski, and he'll get the you know what I mean, the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they're, you know what I mean? They just believe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Watch them. They'll come to the altar. When we have our altar calls and we, you know what I mean, maybe even tonight, you'll see them come in here. The youth run up here to the front of the altar. They're not straggling back over here somewhere, you know, trying to just, they're over here at the front. They want pastor to bless them and, you know what I mean, they want to receive the Holy Ghost. They want to fall out. They want to, they're hungry for God. That's why I like working with the kids. I think that's why my wife's back there. It's easier. <laughs> Amen. The fourth and the last one is this. What was number one? To know him. How do we increase our faith? How do we grow our faith? By knowing him. Intimacy with God. Number two was? To ask him. To pray in parentheses. Number three was? To listen to him. Reading your word. Putting the CDs on. Putting the, the Bible teaching. Watching pastor. We got how many videos on YouTube? Hundreds of videos on YouTube that are out there that, man, uh, hundreds and thousands of hours of study have went into these. You with me? And the other night when we were in men's, uh, uh, Robert's brother, 
Then he's telling me, he's a pastor. He says, man, I'm watching you. I just want you to know that I'm watching your videos. And my granddaughter's sitting there watching them with me. And he says, I want you to know I'm, I'm in there. And I'm studying them. And I'm, and I'm like, man, thank you, God. Amen. That's what they're there for. Amen. They're not there to, you know what I mean, so that I could say I'm doing something on YouTube. Right. They're there for your benefit. Yeah. You can go back and you can go on. Uh, we have uh, the New Hope one, and we also have one with under Alexandra Vasquez, which is probably a hundred and something videos on there, too. And them are some of the oldies but goodies, man. Yeah. Get in there, you may get fired up and saved and everything else. <laughs> and the fourth one is to fellowship. And I put this, and I, I, I hope you understand what I'm saying team spirit. Yep. Fellowship, team spirit. We just heard a minute ago, you know what I mean, that we're to, you know, help each other and build each other up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You, you, you always heard about that, building yourself up. Yeah. Uh, every time I've read it, it's always about building me up, not building you up. Yeah. And I didn't know that by me coming to prayer, by me praying, or by me being a part that I'm building you up. Yeah. That's what I was saying the other night, right? I was saying, uh, Laura, when Laura comes, she encourages pastor to go, keep Amen. going, pastor. Amen. I'm listening. Amen. I may not have my life all together, and none of us do, no, right. but I'm listening. Amen. You with me? And every time you come, and every time you show up, it encourages my life. Amen. I'm listening. Amen. And I might be growing like a turtle and a snail, and, a, <laughs> and, and <laughs> something you're dragging on a line, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm growing, I'm learning. Amen. Fellowship, team spirit. Amen. I was thinking of the East High Eagles and the uh, Aquilas and the, the cheerleaders. My daughter was a cheerleader for four years there. And, you know, I mean, they would do so much to try and build their team and build it. And there's, come on, shout, scream, yell. Come on, East, East High Eagles and all this stuff. And they're waving pom-poms and doing all this. That's team spirit. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Being a part, being excited, being there. Yeah. You with me? I think I'm reading out of Hebrews, Hebrews 10, 23 through 25. And I read it in context because it says this. It says, let us hold fast to the profession of our faith. And I put in parentheses, without wavering. That means without giving up, without losing hope, without backsliding, without feeling sorry for ourselves, without questioning, without looking around, without, he said, without wavering. You can understand a wave means just tossed to and fro. James calls it in James chapter 1, I think in verse 3, a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways, not just one way, in all his ways, because what you do for God will affect every part of your life, and what you don't do for God will affect every part of your life. He said, without wavering, he said, for he is faithful that promised. Jesus is faithful. And he promised you that. Wow. He says, and let us consider one another. Amen. What did some of your different translations, the easier translations say? Let us consider one another. What does it say? Just, just the part about let us consider. Does it say anything different? Or you got to see how Okay, okay, okay. Let's see how inventive we can become. Yeah. How, to, how to stir you up. How to build you up. That's what pastor has to do. That's what cheerleaders have to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's what team spirit has to do. Yeah. Try and do dumb, crazy stuff. You know, a mascot. I mean, we need a mascot for New Hope. <laughs> I don't know what it would be. The fighting salmon. <laughs> it might have to be a salmon just oh, no. swimming or something. <laughs> Trying to encourage you to, you know, keep going for God. Don't let go, brother. Don't let go. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. He said, "What? Be inventive yeah. about what?" In encouraging, love, and helping out. Let's be inventive in encouraging, loving, and helping out each other. Yeah. That's pretty heavy duty, right there. Yeah. That takes the eyes off of me. Yeah. yeah. Puts him on helping you. Amen. And that takes your eyes off of just you yep, yep. and looking and helping other people. Right. When you're in need and when you're hurting, it's a good time to help other people. Yep. That's when God steps in and helps you. Right. Mm -hmm. Without wavering, he says, for he, that, he is faithful at promise. 
and let us consider one another. Let's be inventive on the way to provoke unto love and good works. To provoke you, to provoke one another, to love each other, and to go out and do good works. That's right, amen. You with me? Amen. He said, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves over ourselves together as the manner of some is. What does your say, Al? Um, not avoiding worshiping together as some do, but spurring each other on. But spurring each other on. He says, and so, and, and so much more, so mu and so much the more as you see that day approaching. Yeah. Amen. 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 I close with this. Little faith is fearful faith. It's doubting God. Doubting God's ability to do what he, His Word says He can do and will do. It's limiting God. One thing that God hates is for His people to limit Him and what He can do. Remember the, remember the Israelites said, are you going to feed us out here in the middle of nowhere? Can God do that? That's right, man. Amen. He did it. That's right. right. Let's believe God. Let's ask Him. Let's pray. Let's listen to Him. Amen? Amen. And let's fellowship with Him and with one another. Amen. Let's grow in faith. Amen? Amen. 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 Stand with me tonight.